Alright, welcome back to the RBL, and if you miss any episode in the series, the playlist is in the description. The RBL Discord is in the description as well. And if you become a channel member, you get access to the members only RBL Discord server to submit your own custom players for the draft classes. So let's quickly shout out those members. So let's give thanks to the Spider Within, uh, GH5TT, Huntrix, Two of Us, Dylan Miner, TG Miley, and Ethan Letterman. So thank you guys for becoming the uh, TKO channel members. But we are now in the offseason after Season 2, and the Cincinnati Lions became the second ever RBL champion by defeating the Jacksonville Bulldogs in the finals, and we have the biggest draft and free agency of the RBL to date. But before we get into the draft, we have some additional things to review. We have four new teams uh, joining the RBL this season, and they are going to be the Indianapolis Spirits. Uh, I managed to uh, buy the uh, St. Louis Spirits team from the NBA and rebranded it to the Indianapolis Spirits since we already have a St. Louis team, the St. Louis Sound. And then the Columbus Coyotes, the Montreal Firebirds, and the New Jersey Knights. And Montreal Firebirds are the first a uh, foreign team in the RBL, non-American team. And in the next video, I'll explain some of the new rules and awards for Season 3 and also go more in depth on the teams, uh, as I did in like the first episode of the series. But let's see uh, the player uh, pool for the biggest RBL draft so far. And as you see, the player lo the lottery teams will be battling the select is going to be James Harden, uh, who struggled with the Clippers uh, in his last season with them. And he's basically made himself unattractive for NBA teams with his frequent uh, trade requests. So the RBL is an easy option for him uh, to declare for. And all, it also was for his teammate Russell Westbrook. He's in a similar boat and he also decided to declare. And some other notable names uh, is uh, the EuroLeague all-time leading scorer Mike James. There's also DeMarcus Cousins, uh, Shaquille O'Neal's son, uh, Sharif O'Neal. There's Kai Soto. And a big, big name in his draft is the son of LeBron James, Bronny. He had a disastrous rookie season for the Lakers and only played in three games but was in the G League most of the season and only after one season due to LeBron throwing fits about Bronny's playtime and uh, Bronny struggling, the Lakers actually released him and he's, he officially declared for the RBL draft and if all goes well for Bronny, we could see maybe LeBron taking his talents here but that would be a big if but just throwing it out there. But with all that being said, let's see who will win the number one pick in this draft and select James Harden. And here are the teams battling in the RBL draft lottery. And after simulating, we see that the final will uh, be taking place between the St. Louis Sound and the Baltimore Glory, who both had really disappointing seasons. Uh, both teams uh, made the playoffs in season one, and the Glory actually made the finals one game away from winning, but failed. But yeah, both teams didn't make the playoffs season two, so James Harden would be huge for either team. And it appears, wow, that the St. Louis Sound in dominant fashion uh, win against the Glory, and they are going to be selecting James Harden with the number one pick uh, in the biggest RBL draft ever. Awesome for the Sound, and let's now officially head into the RBL draft. So the St. Louis Sound battles through the draft lottery tournament, and they got the number one pick. And they select James Harden with it, so congrats to the sound. And they'll probably have the biggest jump up in wins from uh, last season. And Mike James at number two goes to the Chicago Legacy. He is the all-time leading EuroLeague scorer. Uh, so the Chicago Legacy, they get a great point guard. Speaking of great point guards, there is uh, Russ Westbrook going to the Omaha Barrage. And Jackson Coffey for the uh, Tampa Bay Sharks. And then Connor Reynolds going uh, for the Athens Ravens, point guard for them. And Sean Henson goes uh, to the Raleigh Calvary. Ethan Daniel goes to the Storm, who need major help to get them to the playoffs, finally. Blake Gordon goes to the Baltimore Glory, who uh, didn't have as good a season as they did their first season around. And there's Miles Bridges going to the Liberty. He's had a lot of offseason uh, issues, so hopefully this can be a good reset for him in the RBL. He's going to go to Louisville. There's Landon Nagel going to the Bulldogs. Here is Justin Carr from Purdue going to the Pittsburgh Force. And Lucas Monroe from Ohio State will be going to the Fort Worth Panthers. Adrian Tango, uh, Kentucky big man, will be playing for the uh, um, Oklahoma City Thunder. And then there's Kai Soto, popular uh, foreign player, uh, going to the uh, Kansas City Sparrows there. 
Mike Madison going to the uh, Nashville Stars. Here's David Mayville going to the defending champions, the Cincinnati Lions. And here is the first ever player, uh, Forrest Moser, first ever player going to a uh, expansion team, going to the Inna Indianapolis Spirits. And here's Hunter Dickinson, former big man for Kansas, going to the Columbus Coyotes. Here's Robert Horn going to the Montreal uh, Firebirds. And Caleb Stricken, uh, Strickland from USC is going to go to the New Jersey Knights. And here we get into the second round. Uh, the Legacy, wow, big selection. They go to Marcus Cousins. That's absolutely huge. There's Caleb Love going to the Omaha Barrage, former uh, Tar Heel and uh, Arizona Wildcat. There's Noah Sheffield from Villanova, uh, small forward going to the Tampa Bay Sharks. Frodo Rock, pretty cool name there. He's going to the uh, Athens Ravens. And Joey Taylor is going to join Ethan Daniel in Virginia for the Storm. And there's a big selection. Zaire Wade, Dwayne Wade's son, uh, will be playing for the Nashville Stars. And speaking of love, there's Kevin Love joining uh, Caleb Love in uh, Omaha. JJ Lane will be playing for the uh, uh, St. Louis Sound. And wow, Bronny James, uh, my recording stopped there for some reason, but Bronny James is going to go to the uh, Jacksonville Bulldogs. Javante Williams going to the Fort Worth Panthers. And then Eli Shuster, uh, shooting guard, is going to go to the Pittsburgh Force, help them out. Kwame Ose uh, from uh, UConn. We'll hopefully get along with Zach Eady because, you know, UConn beat Purdue pretty recently. But Malik Beasley will join the Kansas City Sparrows. There's White St. Pierre going to the Nashville Stars. Helling from England. Don't see many English players, so hopefully he'll um, inspire more players coming out of England. And there's Nasir Little going to the um, Lions. And Aaron Bradshaw, Kentucky big man, going to the Spirits. And there's a great... Uh, a score from college pj hall from clemson going to the coyotes and there's a great uh, carolina tar heel armando uh, baycott dominant center going to the firebirds and the last selection in the draft is darius basley and surprisingly sharif o'neill does not get drafted so i assume he'll get signed but i'm gonna assume he didn't get drafted because he probably failed like a medical physical he's had a lot of health problems so i imagine he'll get signed by a team in free agency so uh we'll see where he lands but this is the uh uh, recap of the draft so make sure to pause if you you know you miss a player don't know where you went but very good draft very good draft a lot of good players joining all right so let's first look at the chicago legacy and they pretty much have a very similar team but they had a great draft i mean they select mike james who already is one of the highest overall players in the league amazing scorer and they also drafted marcus cousins so they're scoring they already had a pretty good offense, just their defense sucked. Uh, they didn't really do anything to address their defense, but uh, they definitely added some more offense. They also signed uh, Svia Mikhailuk from the Calvary. They also signed uh, George Ham, who didn't get drafted, but as you see, he is a great uh, defender and three-point shooter. So expect the legacy to make a huge jump, especially if Mike James and Chris Cousins uh, added to this team. The Columbus Coyotes, new expansion team. Uh, they have they they got Josh Akogi, uh, they got Sharif Cooper, and they they also they got a great player, uh, Mac McClung from the uh, Pittsburgh Force. They got Poku, Jared Solinger from the the uh, Baltimore Glory, and they also got Tristan Jazz on their team. Looks like the uh, legacy let him go, and they they drafted Hunter Dickinson, great big man for them. They also got Brandon Jennings, who the Cavalry let walk, and they also got Amon Shumpert. So see how they do in the first season. The Omaha Barrage draft Russell Westbrook, but they also have Luca Garza, Davian Mitchell, Terrence Ross, and they also uh, drafted Kevin Love and, uh, well, they, they drafted the drafted a lot of loves, Caleb Love and Kevin Love. <laughs> Pretty interesting there, so we'll see uh, if the love is in the air for the uh, Barrage this upcoming season. The Nashville Stars, the first ever RBL champions, uh, they had a great season, but they, they lost in the first round, unfortunately, but... They didn't really make any moves. I mean, they drafted Zyre Wade and Mike Madison. So adding those two guys should only help them. Um, I mean, the original roster got them to a two seed. So I imagine 
um, they'll be a very similar team. They're obviously led by Elijah Patterson, who is one of the best players in the league. So I expect good, uh, still expect good things from the uh, Nashville Stars. All right, the Baltimore Glory. They have a pretty similar roster, but they signed Kira Lewis Jr. from the St. Louis Sound. Uh, both seasons of the RBL was a candidate for sixth man of the year, so he'll be a great bench player. They also got Cleek Jones from the Fort Worth Panthers, so their point guard situation is uh, pretty stacked at the moment. But they also drafted Ben Gordon, and then they also uh, signed two undrafted players, uh, Jaquavius Thompson and Thomas Mueller. So we'll see how those undrafted players do for the glory this season. The Athens Ravens are led by uh, NJ Jesquez, who had one of the best rookie seasons uh, last season. A uh, great player for them. He's going to be the new starting point guard. Uh, and then they they also uh, uh, drafted uh, Cam Reynolds, and they also made a trade. So let's get into this trade. They decided to trade Frodo Rock because they are pretty set at the point guard situation. They don't need another point guard. But what they do need is a big man who can play some defense. So they decided to trade Frodo Rock. Uh, they get uh, Brandon Carey Jr. from the St. Louis Sound and a second round pick. So that is uh, one of the... Uh, Few trades that happened this offseason. The Jacksonville Bulldogs made the finals last year and they decided to uh, select in the draft one of the biggest names, Bronny James. So he'll be a great backup point guard for them. He could play defense, make some threes for them. And they also uh, drafted uh, Landon Nagel, who is a uh, good big man for them. So they pretty much have a very similar roster and they added some good uh, draft players. So expect big things from the Bulldogs this season. The Tampa Bay Sharks, they uh, traded Kevin Knox in the uh, this season, and uh, it didn't really help them. Uh, uh, he was causing some chemistry issues, but uh, they, don't, they they were losing a lot more when they traded him. So uh, in this offseason, they decided to, obviously, they drafted Jackson Coffey. They drafted Noah Sheffield, but they signed a great backup point guard from the uh, glory, uh, Skylar Mays. They also signed uh, Austin Rivers. Nathan Knight and Jacob Toppin, so some pretty interesting moves. I don't expect much from this team, but they should be better than they were last year, uh, especially uh, if Jackson Coffey plays well in his rookie season. The Cincinnati Lions, the defending champions, uh, they're led by Usman Gruba, Chase Allcroft, Markeith Morris, and obviously the general, uh, Ricky Rubio. They drafted Nasir Little, and then they also decided to sign a free agent, uh, Isaac Bonga, who didn't get drafted, so... Interesting stuff there for the defending champions. We'll see how it works for them. The Fort Worth Panthers uh, had a great season last year, uh, but they decided to make a good uh, signing with Admiral Schofield, a great um, defender and three-point shooter for them. They were one of the worst uh, defensive teams last year. That's why they traded for their ones in the wall, which uh, was a great trade. They went from like number 11 to number 5 and made the playoffs. So, uh, Schofield would be great defensively for them. They also drafted uh, Lucas Monroe, a good backup point guard for them. They also signed Evan Fournier from the Baltimore Glory. The Pittsburgh Force have consistently been a, a good playoff team in the first two seasons, but they haven't made out of the first round. Uh, and to help them out with this, they signed uh, DJ Wilson, and they also signed... Marcus uh, Morris Jr. from the Athens Ravens. So some decent pieces for them, but will it be enough to get them to a second round? We'll see. Uh, Keith Hansen has improved tremendously for them. Uh, he's now their starting power for, so we'll see how he does next to Dwight Howard this season. The Louisville Liberty, uh, they were a two seed in the first season. They were an eight seed last year. Uh, failed to make it out of the first round in both scenarios, but uh, they're led by Jonathan Isaac and rising star Monty Bates, and they decided to... Uh, Sign uh, Jalen Clark from the National Stars, one of the best defenders in the league. So that is a good signing. They also got Reese Beekman, and uh, they drafted Miles Bridges, and uh, also signed Justin Jackson. So uh, we should see some big improvements, especially with the Jalen Clark signing. I'm excited to see how he does. And then Reese Beekman can honestly compete as a starting point guard for Malachi Flynn. Uh, so we'll see what how Beekman, former Virginia player, does for the Louisville Liberty. The St. Louis Sound, uh, obviously with the number one pick, selected James Harden. They should by far have the biggest jump in wins. I mean, he's a 97 overall. I mean, they're definitely going to get some more wins. So uh, we'll see how the Sound do. But uh, they, they also made the trade for Frodo Rock. They uh, drafted J.J. Lane. They also signed Devon Reed from the Calvary. So that kind of sucks for the Calvary. They traded for Devon Reed, but he decided to leave. 
Uh, but this is a really good team, and I expect them to easily make the playoffs. The Virginia Storm have been uh, by far the most disappointing team in the RPL. They have fan favorites Bull Bull and D Rose. They made uh, two trades uh, this season, but it didn't help them make the playoffs. But in this offseason, they drafted Ethan Daniel. Uh, they managed to re sign Willie Cauley Stein. Uh, they also traded for Josh uh, Christopher, so let's look at this trade. The Athens Ravens have a plethora of guards, and they, they really didn't have uh, any minutes to give to Josh Christopher, and he's talented enough to get minutes for another team. So uh, they decided to get a second round pick out of it in Edmund Summer. They're not going to play him, but they mainly made this trade for the second round pick. So the Virginia Storm uh, get a great bench player for them in Josh Christopher. The OKC Wolverines had the number one pick last year, and they used it on Zach Eady, which proved to be a great selection as he won MVP and Rookie of the Year, and he got them to a four seed, and they were the third worst team in the first season, so they had the uh, one of the biggest jumps. The biggest jump last season was the Cincinnati Lions, who went from a, the second worst team to the championship winner, so uh, the Wolverines had a great season. Uh, AJ Wolf has improved tremendously, as we see there. Uh, he was like a like a 77 overall in this first season, I believe. Uh, but they also drafted Adrian Tango and Kai Osai. Uh, they also signed uh, Sandro. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name. So this is pretty much the same team, but their young players are developing. So we'll see how the Wolverines do in uh, Season 3. The Kansas City Sparrows, one of the most popular teams in the league. They've gotten very unlucky. They went to two back-to-back -back Game 3s, where if they won the games, they would have went to the Finals. Uh, in the first two seasons, so it's tough, tough stuff there. But uh, they are—they have—they're a great team. Uh, they have Jimmer Fredette, uh, Jackson Hayes had a great rookie season. Obviously, Jarrett Culver, great defender, a ball handler for them. And uh, they drafted uh, Kai Soto, and Malik Beasley. Uh, they also have the Professor on this team, so they're a very fun team to watch. We'll we'll see if they can finally make the uh, the jump and get to the finals. The Montreal Firebirds, and as you see, they actually uh, traded for uh, Kevin Knox from the uh, Chicago Legacy. So if we look at this trade, we see that they got Willie Hearn and Gomez in return and a second round pick. Uh, the um, the Montreal Firebirds desperately, desperately needed a power forward. The Legacy um, don't really need Kevin Knox since they drafted uh, DeMarcus Cousins. They want to start both Thomas Bryant and Cousins in a starting lineup. So, Ke so they're going to move Thomas Bryant to the four. And Kevin Knox doesn't want to come off the bench. So they decided to move him, get a second round pick out of it. So uh, now the Montreal Firebirds have a good star player to build around. And uh, we'll see how the Firebirds do this season. They also uh, got uh, Zach Wajaya. They got they got Dion Waiters. The stars decided to let him walk. Uh, Adrian Walker. And then there's also Jay Crowder, uh, Robert Horn, Keon, uh, Keon Johnson. Antonio Reeves, former Kentucky player. They also got um, Armando Baycott. This is a weird team. A bunch of talented players, but I imagine they're probably not all going to fit well. But they should be uh, fun to watch at moments in this season. We'll see how they do, especially if Kevin Knox, Deion Waiters on the same team. So, interesting team the um, Firebirds built. Raleigh Cavalry have Gordon Hayward, Spencer Dinwiddie. Uh, they signed Tony Bradley from free agency. I believe they signed, or uh, Michich could have went undrafted, I don't remember. But they also signed uh, Leandro uh, Bal Balmero, uh, drafted Kai Jones, they drafted uh, Sean Henson. They also signed Akil Carr. If you remember who Akil Carr is, one of the best high school players of all time, athletic phenom, at only, I believe, like 5'7". So he'll, he'll be a fun player off the bench for them. Uh, the Calvary, interesting team. Uh, we'll see how they do. I have no idea where this team is going to go. The Indianapolis Spirits, another expansion team. They managed to get Frank Neokina, Josh Jackson. Uh, they, uh, they got Trey Alexander from Creighton. He was great for Creighton. They got Melo Trimble from the Barrage. Aaron Holiday from, I believe, the Panthers. Isaiah Roby. Uh, this, this honestly is a pretty good team, especially their starting lineup should be pretty good. I don't think they'll be one of the worst teams in the league, actually. I think they'll be, um, I don't think they'll make the playoffs, but I think they'll be close. The New Jersey Knights, they got Johnny Juzang from the Barrage. They also got Liam Archer from the Liberty. Uh, he wasn't going to get many, many minutes, so they uh, decided to you know, make him available to be drafted by these expansion teams. So Liam Archer, he'll be the uh, starting point guard for the uh, New Jersey Knights now. They also got Seth Curry, uh, Amir Coffey, Caleb Strickland. 
and they got Darius Baisley with the last pick in the draft. And they also signed uh, Taco Fall as well. And uh, he'll, he'll actually be their starting uh, center over uh, Christian Coloco. Uh, you know, get some fans in the seats. Who, who wouldn't want to see uh, Taco Fall play? So he'll be the starting center for the New Jersey Knights. And this team uh, should be pretty horrible defensively, but offensively, they should be pretty decent to watch. All right, and that does it for the, uh, the off-season moves. And uh, yeah, we went through the draft, free agency. There was a couple of trades in there. So make sure to like, subscribe if you enjoy this video. And the next episode will be the start of season three. We'll get into some, uh, we'll get in depth. We'll go into the teams, and we'll also go through some, uh, a couple of new rules and changes and all that. So uh, I appreciate it, guys. All the support in the series has been awesome. The growth on the channel is absolutely bonkers. I'm being honest. So I appreciate it, everybody. Uh, thank you. Make sure to like, subscribe once again, and peace out, guys.